This video was brought to you by Stoltenberg, Abed Root Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? We are now at Nebenes. As are you guys happy to see me here in the cold weather? Yes, unfortunately, we are not able to test this in spring. Ideally, we want to do this in spring and summer to see how good the range is in the Tesla Model 3. This is the, the 60 kilowatt hour LFP battery. SR Plus, well, it's called Standard Plus now. So, yeah, but you know what it is. So, it's from Marcus Beal. Awesome. You see? Just looks like, just looks just like all the other Model 3s you've seen. Except for that, we have we have pizza, uh, pizza wheels. Yeah, how about that, huh? Do you like them? Do you like that shit? Pizza wheel with a bit of uh, curb rush. Yes, yes, why not? Well, what, is, what is this again? Sa Sailun. Yeah, it's gonna sail a lot <laughs> once we start braking. <laughs> Let me see, what is it? Um, uh, yeah, so 235, 45, 18. It's called, what is it? Uh, Ice. Ice blazer, yeah. All right, all right. So those are the wheels, tires, and um, <coughs> I can show you the studs inside. We have got my Tesla hooked up. This is not panel gap; it's a trick to keep the HVAC on. You see, yeah, keep the HVAC on and screens on when you're outside. Then you always have to do this. And yes, now you guys see the charging screen. Wait, how fast are we charging? How fast are we charging? Uh, it used to be nice uh, and big letters over here. Okay, the charging screen has been reduced to uh, this. Huh? Isn't it brilliant? Worse than 11 for the win. Yeah, okay, anyway, so um, I'm going to check something here. Battery temperature is 20 degrees. So I think I will charge up a little bit more. It might be 25 by the time we start, but we will start now. And the plan is that we will do 120 tests. This is going to be a range test. And it's, it's the pooping man. Minus four degrees Celsius outside. So we will drive to the north, 120 kilometers per hour, and then back again. We will only measure the consumption. And then on the next run, we do the 90 test and we actually measure the battery capacity. So, um, all right, uh, I'm gonna wait a little bit more. I need to shoot the, in, uh, the Thai version and then off we go. We are on the move now. So um, I actually have to cruise at 124 kilometers per hour to match the 120 speed, GPS speed, wow. I guess these tires are uh, sailing now. Okay, anyway. So is it freaking brilliant V11 uh, user interface? Yeah, so we uh, we look at the map here. Okay, great. Now, where, where where's the where's the card? Where, where, where are they? Where, huh? I want to see consumption. Huh? This car is just spinning like a mofo. No, if you want to see consumption, you have to go here, the trip. Here you can see the consumption. 230 watt hour per kilometer, yes, awesome. But then what about the map? Okay, but I want to see the map then. Now what then then you have to close this one. Nine! Nine 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 nine! Um I was just driving around here and then suddenly auto steer and everything just went off and now I get this. Because the front radar is uh, not uh, it, I mean reduced visibility. What? It's not even snowing outside. Uh, we just have a little bit of good Norwegian schmutz on the windscreen and on the front. And then the radar is not working. What? What kind of shit is this? Alright, after a couple of minutes, then we're back in business. So I don't know what the, what's up with the radar. I just needed a little bit of recovery. So, uh, But we're good, we're good. Consumption right now is 192. Wow. That is very good considering that it's minus one degrees and we have wet road also. So most, actually most other cars, especially legacy automakers, they will hover way over 200 watt hour per kilometer on this kind of test. We're gonna check, uh, compare against other uh, EVs, uh, roughly the same uh, driving conditions now. But okay, let's get back to uh, the starting point. All right, round one. It's minus four over here. There, 194 watt hour per kilometer, very impressive. Right now we just have to charge the car to 100% and it will take, uh, how long is it? Why did they even make this shit? <laughs> it's freaking useless. We, I mean, you have, you see some information here, but then you have to look at the rest here. 
it will take 55 minutes. All right, all right, we're charging at, let me zoom in here for you so you can see the numbers. We're charging at 63 kilowatt. Oh, there you go, thank me later. Oh yeah, I've been eating some bread. Finally, some good Norsk Husmannskost. Um, yeah, and remember to get your Suniva juice. So anyway, look here. We are 96% and we're getting 24 kilowatt. Wow, that is still good, good speed, huh? Charging like a BIOS. Remember that we have only 60 kilowatt hour battery. And also, I'm live streaming right now. And I asked the live stream people, I made a poll, straw poll. What should we call this car? Because I have to show you, I forgot to show you. Tesla calls it standard plus. It's not standard range plus anymore, it's standard plus. So at least according to the live stream people, they still want to call it SR plus. And then a few people want to call it rear wheel drive. And then S plus or SP. <laughs> so uh, yeah, maybe I should also post. Yeah, if I remember, I will also post this poll in the in the video here and we can see you can keep voting and guess see what you guys want to call this thing is it still a standard range plus it is standard plus or what the heck is it uh, this is always funny it says charging complete but we are still receiving seven kilowatt hour per hour yeah it says right there seven kilowatt hour per hour you see <laughs> no but not only that but look here if you look and scan my tesla we now have 101% state of charge. Yeah, why not? We're gonna blow this shit up. <laughs> okay, but I'm gonna check something. Uh, here, this one is now increasing. 60.5, you look at that, 60.6. .6. Oh yeah, we are gaining more and more battery capacity. We are pushing the boundaries of the battery. This is it, this is this is the break-in, you know? When you uh, take, uh, when you ta hinna, and then, then you set, the bar of how much capacity this battery has, then we just keep pushing. Ah, this is interesting. Nominal full pack is 60.4, whereas nominal remaining is 61.1. So actually it should mean that before we started pushing it to 100%, it was 60.4. Somehow we gain uh, 0.7 kilowatt hour extra. We are on the move and uh, before we, right before we left when it stopped charging, it showed 61.1 kilowatt hour uh, normal remaining. And okay, we have to cruise at 93. It's 90, but I'm gonna show you something here. Um, if I do this. We have 60 kilowatt region, huh? I noticed it right after we started driving. We have 60 kilowatt region. It means that there must be a little bit over the top here also. Okay, hang on, let me just adjust here. Yeah, all right, anyway, now I guess we have to check the weight of the car. All right, front axle, 920, the whole car. One eight sixty. hmm. And Mjösen today is quite calm and uh, yeah, we have fog, so I don't see much. What? I just got hammered by a leaf. The heck? Oh, look at the consumption. It's minus 8 degrees Celsius outside. And we have 140 watt hour per kilometer. It's even wet outside. Huh? That is remarkably good. Look at that. 138 watt hour per kilometer. <laughs> Ionic, go home! We are almost at the turnaround point here in uh, Rutsugda. It's still uh, dark and uh, foggy and uh, it's supposed to be sunny today, but uh, not today, son, not today. But I just noticed something. Tesla, they remove fraction in the distance. We used to have fractions here. It's gone. G-U-N. Why? Why is Tesla... Why did they make everything worse? <laughs> oh man, man, man. Okay, we are about to do one full cycle, which means that we went from Nebenes to the north and then we went back to uh, Dal and now we're gonna pass by Nebenes. So that cycle is 182 kilometers, it's a well known distance. Now, because this 
car doesn't show me fractions anymore. I have to guess that this, there, 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 185. It just turned 185 now, which means that I can guess that it should be 185.5 or six maybe by the time we pass by the bridge. So I guess based on that, I can estimate uh, the, the error because this car is over-reporting by quite a lot, almost 2% over-reporting then. Yeah, okay, over the bridge there. Oh, we just passed the bridge. It's 186. Whoa, actually, it's more like 186.5. Okay, so I have to base it on that one and calculate the over report. This, this thing over reports like a mofo. We are now at Strandlicha. Okay, it's not too important. The battery, the Aku is down to 50%. And the car reports 29 kilowatt hour spent. Ooh. And the distance, what well, distance is uh, over reported, but uh, it seems like we can do 400 kilometers. And it seems like we have 58 kilowatt hour. <laughs> We're getting close to the end now. Uh, it's now uh, four in the afternoon and we have more traffic in the left lane than the right lane. <laughs> you know you're in Norway then. But okay, so normally I would end up at, uh, at Nebenes, right? And that's usually the starting ending point. But however, Klofta is on similar uh, elevation as Nebenes. So I think I will end up at Klofta because then I save a little bit of time because I have to go home. So yes, uh, huh, it's kind of busy. We only had three stalls available, closer, but no big deal. We will get uh, spots over there. So uh, the consumption is, oh, let me see. Hang on, let me check. Okay, it's 140, but it's uh, the correct consumption is around 144 watt hour per kilometer because of 2% over reporting. So, all right, so far so good. Let's start heading uh, towards Klofta, the cleavage. We are now on the E16 towards Kongsvinge. We take a little uh, loop to the east and then back again, and we will arrive with roughly 1% left. So, um, yeah, you see, now we have 5% battery left and we still don't have any power limit. And I can show you here that, um, well, you can see the numbers. 150 kilowatt power limit reported by this one, which is incorrect. So we should have something like 180 kilowatt power limit. And the battery has chilled down to 14 degrees only, but we still don't have any cold weather issues. So this is quite good. This is also part of the test to see what happens when we discharge it uh, low. Uh, but I have to say that this LFP battery is doing it uh, well, very well in uh, minus two degrees Celsius. We are now at Klofta and we have full house here today. <laughs> well, it's Sunday and then people are charging up before they go home. So uh, let's check out the charging session. We came here with 1% and look at this, 68 kilowatt only, mainly because the battery was so cold. So yeah, now the battery is quickly heating up but this is the name of the game. Normally, of course, you wouldn't be discharging it that deep and you would be navigating to the supercharger. So uh, yeah, normally you would be getting way more than 100 kilowatts with this battery. So if you look at the stats now, so we managed to drive 407 kilometers according to the trip meter without fractions. And that is almost 400 kilometers of real distance. And then we had 1% left. So based on that, uh, I also estimate that, uh, I was looking at the numbers, by the way, even without fractions, you can see right when the numbers change. And I saw that uh, we had 57.5 kilowatt hours. So you see, we didn't get 58 because there's a little bit of losses during discharge because it's not nominal, uh, it's not in the lab. But anyway, this is really good result. 57.5 kilowatt hour and we have, I estimated 404 kilometers on wet road with minus two to minus five degrees, depending on where you are. Uh, in winter, that is extremely good. And also for the, for the high speed run, it was also fairly good, almost 300 kilometers. And if you compare these results compared to the other cars out there, uh, even the Model 3, this the cheapest Model 3 now beats uh, Fat e-tron in winter. It, it beats, um, um, Actually, it beats many, many cars. Uh, I pace also. And it, it is extremely good, even if the battery is not that big, but it, the car is just so efficient. You could say, well, maybe it has something to do with uh, 
the pizza wheels I, I, I don't know really but I think if we try to use original wheels rims we should still get more or less the same result maybe even better results because um, nook and tires they tend to be efficient right so yes uh, what is it to say then uh, the new standard end plus or whatever we should call it I'm not sure what we should call it but the new uh, standard plus just kicks ass for the Lord it has so good range even in winter and I estimate that in summer we can achieve something like 460 to 480 kilometers on a good day huh how good is that that is extremely good range efficiency on this car but I think that's gonna be it for now I hope you guys enjoyed this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later